I, I cannot even explain very nice. I tried to find this place, but I couldn't. So New Zealand, this is the one. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel about living in New Zealand. In today's video we're gonna be talking about moving to New Zealand from Europe. Reasons, why would you do it? Uh, why would you consider? Because I just moved after living for eight years in Europe. I just moved to New Zealand like one week ago. So pretty fresh, um, pretty impressed and I'm gonna be sharing my experience with you and also my points because this decision was very analytical and I got the least uh, to talk about. So as you might know um, there are a bunch of people from Europe who moved to New Zealand particularly from United Kingdom, also Germany, and Netherlands, France, uh, all over actually. So uh, there are many Europeans who are wanting and considering and moving to New Zealand. From my experience I lived in Germany, in Austria and last two years I lived in Serbia. So right now I moved from Serbia to New Zealand. The main points why I picked this country was first it was the language so it's an English-speaking country if you are living in Europe you probably speak different language unless you are in United Kingdom so if you are moving to different European countries you always have to adapt the language which is spoken in this country so you have to learn a new language which in New Zealand you don't have to you just come here you speak English as you already understand English right you speak English if you're watching this video so it's pretty easy I realized that I want to live in a country where I can understand people. Of course you can live in Europe, like you can live in Germany for example, and uh, don't speak German, so it's not a problem. You will survive, you know, you don't have to speak German. It's all up to you. But it's not very comfortable to live in a country where you don't speak local language. Imagine, you don't understand anything what's going on. As in New Zealand, it's English and it's pretty understandable. It's not like they have really strong dialect or accent. It is, yeah, but it's pretty cute and it sounds very nice. I love it. I love Australian accent and New Zealand. So um, this was the first point. The second is the climate. Yeah, the New Zealand is pretty interesting because it's, it's climate, it's like it's never hot but it's also never cold. So if you hate cold, like you live somewhere in Norway, you know. <laughs> so I'm originally from Russia, I know how cold it could be. So uh, in New Zealand you will probably never see a freezing temperature unless you're in a South Island where I am. I made it decision cautious because it's okay for me to have a little bit of freezing, you know, but it's like m minus five maybe maximum, so it's not like super super freezing, you know what I'm talking about, like minus 20 and etc. So way cold here, freezing, it's super cold, but it's actually okay, and it's only a few months in a year. And the rest of the year is pretty much amazing because it's never really above 30 degrees Celsius, and it's something like always between 15 degrees and 25. I don't know any country which is better because uh, Australia people say the weather is nice but it can be very hot if you don't like very hot so New Zealand is actually much better in that sense because it's very mild it's very, very temper temperate it's also very similar to many European countries like Central European countries like Germany it doesn't get like too cold like in Germany for example but uh, it's also can be raining more so in in some particular areas in New Zealand there could be a lot of rain so you have to choose where you want to be uh, regarding the climate so I choose the South Island because South Island um, is drier the temperature is uh, lower in the winter so it can be freezing uh, but it's it's very dry so it's like 600 millimeter of rain uh, whereas in a uh, North Island, which is warmer, there is never a freezing temperature. There is always like between 15 degrees to 25 degrees Celsius, but it can be rainy. In Auckland, for example, there are about 2,000 to 2,500 millimeter of rain per year, which is quite a lot. So it can be compared to many European countries in that sense. While South is dry, and I hate rain. It's okay if it's cold, but I hate rain, so that's why I picked the south. To have a lot of sun, because the sun is just like almost all year round. And it's dry. And it's a bit hot in the summer, but it's a bit cold in the winter, which is perfect for my opinion. The next point why I picked this country because of its density of population, 
because there are only 5 million of people and the size of the country can be compared to United Kingdom. So it's pretty big, I would say, but it's only 5 million of people. So there are not many people in your face, you know <laughs> what I mean? Because in Europe, it's just so crowded. I felt like everywhere you go, there are people. There are not much space for yourself. In New Zealand, you, you will have space. You will have a lot of space, especially in the South Island, which is significantly uh, less densely populated than the North Island. Where in the North Island you have Auckland, you have Wellington. Those are two biggest cities. Only in Auckland there are one third or one fourth of the population of the entire country is living. So if you're in the South Island there is Christchurch which has about 300,000 people and the rest are small towns and small cities. And it's like so refreshing to see when you don't see houses and houses and houses after houses and the cities and villages, you just have nature, you just have it to yourself. If you want to go hiking, you can go hiking, you can be on your own. Because even in nature, if you go to some natural destinations in, in Europe, like beaches and hiking in the forests and the mountains, there are many people, right? Like you will be probably not alone you will not be alone. So <laughs> even like last time I went on holidays this summer um, just to see a bit of nature, a bit of beach, right? I went to Italy and I went to the island of Sardinia. So it's an island of Italy. It's not that crowded as it is in the mainland, but it was already crowded. I don't know where you, could you go in Europe so you don't have a lot of people around you and you have a bit of space and you can breathe. I tried to find this place but I couldn't. So New Zealand this is the one. And also related to its less density of people here, the nature is much more like preserved. It's much more untouched than in uh, Europe. So that's also, of course, the big point as to why people travel here. Because of the nature, you don't go to New Zealand to try its food or to see the buildings and architecture. You go for nature. That's why also you move here for nature. To embrace it, to see the mountains, to see the rivers, the lakes, the beaches which are untouched, which are empty. It's uh, something we, what we don't have in European Union, in Europe, maybe in Russia, in Siberia, but in the main European side, uh, everything already was kind of disturbed by humans and not in the best way which is more rare in, the, in New Zealand because New Zealand protects its nature, it protects its land, its country. Also, people here, they are very protective of their country. So, they are proud of the country and they are not like litter, less at least. It's still that feeling of something which I, I cannot even explain. So, the nature of New Zealand is just something, something out of this world. If you see it in a picture, it looks pretty, but when you see it in real life, it's like it's so perfect, but it's not made by human. Maybe it's preserved by human, but not in a big way. So it's uh, like original nature, it's origin, it's so beautiful, it's so just, it's a, such a perfection which will satisfy you, which will like make you inspired, it will impress you. It's just something I haven't experienced yet in my life. So that's why people move here, that's why people travel here, and that's why also you have to have this point. If you move to New Zealand, you also, you should visit the nature, you should go out, you should explore, you know, because it will be a really pity if you are living in Auckland and you never leave the city, because people are not moving here to live in a city, because the cities are not similar to European cities. There isn't much architecture, there isn't much of city life as you used to. People are living in houses, so they are more private in that sense. They're not like bustling, hustling cities and the city life and party and cafes and everything. Not to that extent as you used to, like, I don't know, in Paris. The city life isn't something which you, you should move here. Live in the countryside or have your own house, you know, and then uh, just enjoy the nature. Just don't move here to enjoy the city because it would not be very satisfying as it might be in Europe somewhere in France or Germany or United Kingdom. I mean you got the most beautiful cities ever. Another big point for me was the lifestyle here 
and people. People here are very friendly and everybody will tell you this because they are very relaxed and uh, there are not many people. So if you don't have many people, you want to be friendly to everyone, right? Because if you have a bunch of people and like, uh, you know, in uh, crowded cities, you are a bit like angry and tired and everybody like annoys you because everybody's in your face. But here, because there are not many people and people are very, they take care of each other because there are only five million of people. So if you're not taking care of each other, there would be even less. So it's much more like a community atmosphere, even in the cities and a very relaxed atmosphere. You feel it immediately. When I uh, stepped out of an uh, airport, I was like going to the bus to take a bus and I just was like, okay, buying ticket, like taking out my po um, my wallet and the bus driver, she was, uh, the woman, she was already like, easy, easy. I was, I was easy, I wasn't like rushing or something, but even for her probably, it was like more uh, some, some kind of rushing or I don't know. Even bus drivers are so chilled and so nice. And everybody says hello and thank you. For example, if you leave the bus, you always say thank you to the driver. You not just like walk out of the bus, you say thank you, like loud, so we're here. And uh, I, I don't know, it just makes you so so happy because you are nice to people because if people are nice to you you are you want to be nice to them like as as much as possible and it just makes you and another person happy and it just creates that sense of uh, we are living here together and we communicate you know in uh, large cities or in uh, different countries you might be more living without the connection to people you just like pass by you ignore and you don't talk but here everybody will talk to you randomly if I see you I will just say you and you just like laugh and stuff and just make jokes it's just like so chilled like you go and you just like joke about everything with everyone it's just so funny actually it's just to entertain with people <laughs> I never had been to English-speaking countries so for me it was the first experience after living in Europe in Europe right traveling to countries like in Latin America in Asia where people are in Asia for example they are pretty conservative, right? You don't talk to people like that. But in English-speaking countries, it's, it's easy uh, way of living and saying. It's like chilled, relaxed. So this is, was also a big point for me. Also, with these people, uh, I found myself on the same page because all my work, what I do, is mainly uh, US-based. I'm content creator, so I build websites, which are mainly... So this business model, it's targeted to US. And all my... Uh, like a community, the people who are in the same business as me, so all people with whom I'm, I communicate on a daily basis, they are in US. I didn't want to move to US, in US, so it's not a good option for me, at least for now. But I feel myself really on the same page with people from US, but living in Europe and, you know, thinking as a more like a westernized, you maybe Americanized person, it's a bit difficult. So I felt, um, yeah, very isolated in Europe in some sense, especially in Serbia, uh, because I, I don't feel on the same page with people in mentality-wise and thinking and etc. way of life. Kiwis here in New Zealand were also very similar to all English-speaking countries like Canada, Australia, US. Maybe United Kingdom is a bit different because it's Europe, it's more conservative, I imagine. But uh, here it's just like US, but it's nicer because it's a community here. And of course, I would not compare Americans to Kiwis because you cannot compare them, but it's something similar and it's what I was looking. But here they are much less stressed, much less serious than for example in US, right? Here it's just a little bit similar to US, what I was looking, but uh, much much less stressed and relaxed. So it's even better than I would have moved to US and gone stressed there, I don't know, tried to make money, money, money. But here people don't really think about money and they don't care. They are very down, down to earth, which is also a big difference to other countries. They really don't like chase money and salaries and business and etc. We just want to enjoy life. Why I also came here to enjoy life, not to make money and be in this uh, um, rat race or how you say it, uh, but just enjoy.
and I think New Zealand is the best. You can get a job here, you can still make money, it will be enough. You can enjoy life much, much more here without thinking of, oh, I need to make more and more, because it's not in a society here. People are very sim simple, and it's also something amazing, I guess. So the next point, also important, as a foreigner, when you move to New Zealand, you will not be alone, because there are about 25% of entire New Zealand population are foreigners from different countries, mainly from Asia, but also Europe, as I mentioned, it's British, German, Dutch, uh, French, so a bunch of people, uh, also Latin America, like Brazil, Argentina, it's a huge mix of cultures, and you will see it, especially in the large cities, how multicultural it is, as in small towns, maybe it's more uh, Kiwis and European uh, descent, but in the large cities, there are a lot of Asians, and uh, it's just a cool uh, mix of everything, you know, because they bring uh, also influence to the society. Uh, for example, like a cuisine, you have a lot of restaurants and takeaways for different kind of cuisines, and it's really good quality. So you will not probably get it in Europe. Like I know in UK, of course, you have a lot of also different nationalities and uh, Indian cuisine is very great. But in many other countries in, <laughs> in Europe, maybe you have Turkish, but that's pretty much it. And maybe Japanese. So here, uh, the influence is much bigger. It's in the society is living together. People are very acceptive of other nationalities. I mean, you are not like looked, oh, you're a foreigner, you are weird, or what are you doing here? Nobody will ask you, like, what are you doing here? Because, like, pretending or something, or against you, they would rather, oh, what are you looking, what are you doing here? Like, where are you are from? Where are you come from? Like, oh, how cool. Like, they are curious, they are excited like for you that you are experiencing New Zealand not where like all go away like in some European countries I think it might be the the problem but I will not talk about this anymore but you know Europe can be very conservative and New Zealand not that's super chill to foreigners and you will feel like home almost like from day one I felt like oh my god I feel like so home so comfortable because people are not like pushing you they are open their uh, doors they are welcoming you <laughs> it's so nice so my last point for moving to New Zealand in particular was its cost of living which is pretty high if you will compare to some European countries of course like Portugal, Spain it's much more but it's not that expensive uh, when you come here, you will realize it because uh, it says when you look on the data, like official statistic, it says it's one percent less expensive than in the United States, but it's actually significantly less expensive than in the US. If you look at New York or San Francisco, you look at Auckland, it's like twice cheaper because you cannot take like entire US and see its cost of living because it's so different in each state. As in uh, New Zealand, it's pretty much the same. On your rent, for example, in Auckland it would be more expensive, in Wellington it would be more expensive, but if you look at Christchurch or in the rural area or small towns, it would be much lower. So it's all weights out because you will have a higher salary in Auckland, so you will pay a higher rent, but salaries are not changing then significantly. For example, you can live in Christchurch where rents are cheaper, but you will have almost the same salary than in Auckland. It's not like salaries are going from here to here, so they are pretty much stable across the country. Uh, the rents also are pretty stable, but of course rural areas are much more uh, cheaper, and Auckland and Wellington, they are more on the pricey side, so it's all up to you where you want to live. And you don't have to pay like 4,000 US dollars for an apartment, like average rent here for a house, not for an apartment. You can rent a house for one and a half thousand US dollar, one and a half thousand to two thousand US dollar. Uh, if you are living with your partner or the friends, for example, you can share the rent. And even with your salary, average salary here, it's about 55,000 uh, New Zealand dollars, it's about 30,000 giver, so it's enough for you to cover the rent, maybe you will not save a lot, because salaries are here not that high, as in other countries, you have to keep it in mind, 
unless you are in some very skilled, very high paid uh, position and profession. So salaries are not something else you move here. I would not go here to make money. That's what I mentioned in the beginning, that I don't plan here to make money and save. I just want to enjoy my life and wherever it comes, it comes. I know I can always make money online. It's what I did already for the last three years. Uh, I built websites and uh, I also have a website now about New Zealand. If you are interested, it's called simplenewzealand.com. It's about living in New Zealand, it's uh, what I'm also doing here. I'm writing a lot of content about living in New Zealand and it's gonna help other people who are just like me moving to New Zealand. So if you can move, make money online, you can do that. If not, you can always get a job, it's not a problem. Uh, it's only the issue that the salaries are not high enough to save a lot of money, so you will not be able to save. Just keep it in mind. If you want to make a lot of money, if it's your goal, you shouldn't move to New Zealand, just keep it in mind. Maybe pick US, Australia, Canada, it's better in terms of salaries. So so guys, that was it for today. I know I can talk like endless about the points why you will move here because there are so, you know, there are so many. But if you are thinking about moving here, you really need to list your priorities. In this video, I talked more about my priorities and what differentiates New Zealand to other countries because I'm not talking like moving here to study or moving here to get a job because you can do it in any other country. You can go to UK, you can go to US, wherever. You always can do it in other countries. Country. But what differentiates New Zealand to other places is like a climate and people, nature, the way of life, their lifestyle. It's something very different which you will not see in other places. So consider for yourself, what are your main reasons? Why would you move from Europe to New Zealand or somewhere else? Just think about it. Just subscribe also to this channel because I'm gonna be filming a lot of YouTube videos about New Zealand, also with other foreigners and interviews. So if you are a foreigner who moved to New Zealand or you're moving and you want to be on this channel to talk with me, to chat as I had previously, you can watch my previous videos. Uh, we are just gonna be chatting about your experience, the life here. If you are interested, just write me email on mail at simplenewzealand.com or check out my Instagram, you can also write me there on a private message and we can make a good video about your story on this channel and anything else actually. I'm open, I'm very curious and I want to share as much as much information as possible on this channel for other people who are moving to New Zealand, who are actually living here, to give them just more information which is very helpful because we know that YouTube is the best source to learn and to gain your info. So see you next time.